All right, well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for, for coming in this morning. Um, Mark Gilarducci, I'm Director of uh, Governor Brown's Office of Emergency Services here at OES, and I'm um, going to start off by um, kind of giving you a little bit of an update on what's occurred uh, over the last 24 hours. Uh, it's been, been very busy. Uh, I have a series of briefings that will take place for you uh, this morning from the uh, the various leads from the agencies that are directly involved in this. But let me first start off by saying that uh, this morning, uh, the Vice President of the United States did make a stop here at, uh, at OES at the State Operations Center. Uh, and um, uh, he announced that uh, the President had uh, approved the Governor Brown's request for a major disaster declaration. Uh, this is a significant um, and appreciated um, um, uh, action and, and will greatly assist us in the state of California. It'll assist the, the victims and survivors that have been impacted by this disaster and it'll, and it'll greatly assist the community as we work to rebuild the damages that occurred. Um, so uh, very appreciative of, uh, of the White House and, and, uh, and certainly of FEMA in uh, working with us to be able to uh, get that, that navigated and, and pushed through so rapidly. And we appreciate the Vice President personally coming uh, today and um, making that announcement. Well, we continue to be very busy. Um, roughly about 4,000 or so personnel committed to the various fires throughout the state. These are fire uh, and rescue, law enforcement, emergency management, emergency medical, public health, um, non-governmental support, volunteers, and, um, and, uh, uh, and, and, and our military, our National Guard, everyone working collaboratively together in a very systematic approach to support uh, the various counties uh, that have been impacted by the wildfire. So with that, um, uh, I will start off by having uh, Chief Ken Pemlot, the Director of CAL FIRE, come up and give us an update on the firefighting operations uh, over the last 24 hours and where we're, we're at with that. So Chief Pemlot. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mark. Well, good morning. Um, as we wake up uh, this morning, uh, we have over uh, 17 large fires uh, across California. Uh, in the last 24 hours, burning over 115,000 acres. Uh, this morning, we've updated uh, damage assessments and we're looking at uh, 2,000 uh, structures, homes, uh, businesses uh, destroyed uh, in these fires. Our damage assessment is ongoing. These numbers will be updated. Uh, we are working very diligently uh, to refine those numbers, but understand these are very active fires and uh, we are getting uh, inspectors in there as quickly as we can to, to, to update those numbers. But our focus continues to be on life safety, getting people out from the front of these fires and then engaging in that perimeter control, those efforts that will uh, engage uh, in uh, you know, containing these fires uh, and, and putting them out. Uh, we are this morning uh, updated uh, the fatalities on these fires and uh, I'm sad to report that this morning we updated that to 13 uh, individuals have lost their lives uh, in these fires. And that number continues to be fluid. Understand we still have a number uh, of missing persons or un unaccounted for uh, persons across all of these fires and so we continue to work uh, locally uh, with local officials um, as we can access these fire areas and do uh, accountability checks. So we will continue uh, to maintain that number uh, as a fluid uh, as a fluid number. Uh, we did experience much uh, calmer winds uh, overnight and into this morning. Humidities are up. Uh, all of that is giving uh, firefighters a much better opportunity to start making control efforts on these fires. The red flag uh, warnings that uh, were issued. Uh, uh, have all expired this morning or will expire uh, here shortly throughout the state. Uh, that is good news, but uh, we can't keep our guard down. Uh, we are looking at fire weather conditions and potential red flag warnings returning uh, for later in the week, possibly as early as tomorrow in Northern California, again, for stronger winds uh, and low relative humidities. And so all of that comes at a time when obviously these fires are all uh, in a very dynamic situation and so the, the primary effort for firefighters on these fires is going to be to, to put containment lines in as quickly uh, as possible. As Director Gellarducci indicated, we have thousands of personnel 
uh, assigned to these incidents, and we have many, many more pouring in uh, as we speak. We have uh, firefighting hand crews uh, coming in from the state of Nevada. Uh, we've also requested resources through our federal partners, and the Forest Service is bringing in additional fire engines and hand crews and other personnel from outside of California to bolster uh, our efforts. Uh, I've heard a, a lot of discussion about uh, aviation assets, and I want to assure everyone we have access to almost every aviation and firefighting uh, aviation asset in the country right now. Uh, the Forest Service, our federal partners, have provided everything that we've needed, uh, that we've asked for. Uh, for example, just yesterday, uh, out of our McClellan reload base here in, in Sacramento, uh, we actually had a record amount of retardant pumped. Over 266,000 gallons of retardant was pumped yesterday. Uh, 45 missions were flown just out of that uh, facility alone uh, on several fires uh, here in the region, including the Tubbs uh, and the, uh, the Atlas. Uh, and that included seven uh, missions by the 747. So we are actively employing every aviation asset. Uh, challenges, of course, have been uh, smoke conditions. Um, one of the challenges with the wind when it uh, subsides is that we get smoke inversions, and that um, settles down in the valleys, and it makes it very difficult for some of the aviation assets to clearly see targets and be able to operate. So we're working around that and through that, but we are actively using aviation resources uh, wherever uh, and whenever we can. Just a couple of quick updates uh, on fires this morning. Uh, the uh, uh, Atlas fire is currently at 25,000 acres uh, and 0% uh, contained. And as you know, that's in uh, Napa County. Uh, the uh, Nuns fire uh, in Sonoma County around the Glen Ellen area is 5,000 acres uh, and 0% contained. Uh, the Tubbs fire, the fire that was most damaging to the city of Santa Rosa, is uh, 27,000 acres uh, this morning and 0% contained. Uh, these containment figures we anticipate will start to increase. We have four incident management teams that have deployed uh, across Northern California. They are organizing all of these fires uh, into complexes. So each team is managing multiple fires, sharing resources within these fires, uh, and allocating them to the, the critical uh, areas. These teams are rapidly putting their plans in place, are identifying uh, where they're going to put in control lines, and firefighters, as we speak, are being deployed out to the, the, to the fire lines to, to get that containment up, to get uh, lines cut. So by this afternoon and into tomorrow, we'll start seeing more progress and getting better containment uh, on uh, all of these fires. And I can tell you the priorities today uh, are, um, for example, on the Atlas fire uh, in Napa County. We want to button up the portion of the fire that's impacting uh, the city and county area of Napa so that when uh, winds change, we've uh, bolstered that fire. The Nuns fire, which is impacting Glen Ellen, uh, we are working to keep it off of uh, Sugarloaf Mountain uh, to protect the eastern edge of Santa Rosa. Uh, we are working on the Partrick fire to establish and strengthen um, and again to protect the portions of that fire that are adjacent to Napa. And then lastly, the Tubbs fire, we are working along Calistoga Road uh, again, to uh, protect that flank of the fire uh, and protect any reburn uh, into the, the community of Santa Rosa. All of these efforts are really focusing on the southern ends of all of these fires because if these north winds return, they will push these fires again further to the south. And so our efforts are to strengthen control lines on the southern ends of all of these so they can hold up against the winds uh, should they surface like they did uh, uh, over the weekend. So again, we are far from out of the woods. Uh, we've got uh, several days of fire weather conditions uh, to come, but I can assure you we are moving resources throughout the state. As fires are being contained in other parts of the state, we're moving resources uh, in here to bolster uh, efforts, and so we will continue to do that. I want to encourage everyone. There are many, many local numbers for information. Pay very close attention to uh, websites, the CAL FIRE website, the CAL OES website, uh, social media, and the local contact information at all of the counties. That's where the information on evacuations, shelters, uh, and current real-time fire information can be uh, obtained. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Commissioner uh, Warren Stanley of the California Highway Patrol. Thank you, Director. As far as the CHPR deployment, we have over 100 people deployed to assist with fire. Most of those personnel are working traffic control. We also have some personnel that are providing security at some of the uh, 
uh, shelters that are, uh, uh, people are going to for support and help. Additionally, we have some officers out of our San Jose area that are escorting some FEMA big rig trucks that are carrying water, food, and other supplies, and they're headed to, they're headed to Napa Airport. Additionally, we have a group of uh, eight officers and one sergeant that have been assigned to assist uh, our law enforcement partners in Santa Rosa and Napa uh, with general law enforcement and uh, prevention of looting. And we do have a little good news. We have the uh, 101 through Santa Rosa. Uh, we've been able to open that up so traffic can get through that area. However, in that area, there's still some off ramps that are closed, but the 101 is open and also the 101 a little bit further north, north of Willis to Laytonville, we've been able to open that up. So we're, we're very happy about that. Uh, from our standpoint, uh, appreciate working with our partners and the one thing that, that we ask anybody who's driving around in these areas, please, 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 if you're smoking in your car, please do not throw your cigarettes out your window. Use your ashtrays to dispose of your cigarettes. There's a lot of dry fuel out there. Uh, as uh, Director Penlot talked about yesterday, and it doesn't take much to get a fire started, so we're asking uh, that you do that. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, General Baldwin from the National Guard. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. I'm Dave Baldwin with the California Military Department and the California National Guard. California Military Department currently has 242 soldiers and airmen that are supporting the multiple incidents uh, in Sonoma and Napa counties. Uh, we continue to provide aviation support to CAL FIRE and medical evacuation support uh, in the region. We have uh, military personnel, police personnel that are providing security and assistance at the evacuation centers. Our new mission sets that are evolving, we're providing fuel to first responders uh, because some of the fuel uh, uh, gas stations in the area don't have power. We're also providing uh, truck transportation support to the Sonoma County Sheriff to uh, enable them to get into areas that are otherwise inaccessible. Today, we're also deploying systems that will enable people to communicate with their cell phones, even in areas where cell phone service is not available. So we'll set up uh, phone centers at the major uh, uh, evacuation centers in both Napa and Sonoma County. We've also just received a request and forwarded a request for us to be able to fly our MQ-9 Reaper unmanned aircraft to the Secretary of Defense that will enable us to do up-to-date fire, ma uh, up fire mapping for CAL FIRE and damage assessment for FEMA. And we continue to stand ready with all the other assets of the California National Guard um, as the need arise. And I'll be followed by Mr. Bob Fenton from FEMA Region 9. Good day, Bob Fenton, uh, FEMA Region 9's Regional Administrator. Uh, as Mr. Giladucci uh, uh, discussed, uh, the President issued a major declaration uh, this morning. This gives me the authority to coordinate uh, federal resources in support of the state to help them respond and recover uh, from this fire. Uh, in addition to that, it provides me uh, the authority to provide reimbursement for debris removal and a reimbursement for emergency protective measures. Uh, in addition to the disaster declaration, uh, we've issued 10 fire management assistance grants over the last 24 hours and are providing commodities to help those that are sheltered uh, as uh, the California Highway Patrol discussed some of the trucks that are moving uh, yesterday and, and today. That concludes my briefing. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Um, let me just um, talk a little bit about uh, a few things, shelter operations. Uh, we still currently have around 3,200 individuals that are uh, in shelters, uh, roughly 28 shelters throughout Napa and, um, and the Sonoma area. Uh, we are working uh, to uh, slowly consolidate those and, and uh, make a, a smaller footprint and better services uh, for uh, those shelters as we move over the next several, uh, several days. Uh, but we are working in, in supporting those shelters with additional cots and blankets and water uh, and food as necessary, uh, as well as addressing uh, access and functional need requirements at those shelters. So we have additional uh, equipment and supplies. Uh, uh, Administrator Fenton mentioned it was coming in from FEMA. Also, the California Department of Public Health and the Red Cross have all supported additional uh, items for our shelter operations. Um, 
power uh, and water uh, continue to be uh, a little bit of an issue. The water's better now, although in, in the area uh, directly impacted by the fire, there's not really access there anyway, and that water is being checked. But um, uh, outside the area, the water is fine. Power uh, is, is still a problem. We have several thousand uh, without power in uh, Napa and Sonoma, uh, and, that, and, the, and the power is also affecting the ability uh, not, not only just to uh, charge cell phones, but also to keep things like gas stations open because if you don't have power, you can't move the fuel. And so what we're doing is trying to support that by bringing in fuel trucks um, and actually being able to gas vehicles right out of the fuel trucks so that uh, it, it doesn't require power. Where we can, we're putting generators in place uh, until that power comes up. But we're working closely with our utilities. Uh, they're actually embedded right here in the State Operations Center to address the power needs and try to get the power back up. Same problem with the telecommunications, our cell sites there. There were roughly 77 sites that were damaged or destroyed, as well as a key hub uh, that, that moves the communication pathways. Um, this is, remains a challenge, but uh, we are working. We, yesterday, we, the uh, utilities brought in additional cellular on wheels capabilities. Um, and in addition, uh, as General Baldwin mentioned, they're bringing in um, um, some military assets called Joint Incident Site Communication Units. These are units that will help augment the communications uh, in the area. We understand that communications is absolutely critical for being able people to be able to get information and messages, but also to reach out and talk to their families. So it is a, it is a top priority for us to be able to address uh, communications. Uh, Commissioner Stanley mentioned law enforcement. We've got roughly 230 personnel, law enforcement, mutual aid. They're from police departments and sheriff's departments and other law enforcement entities all throughout Northern California that are working in Sonoma and Napa, um, supporting the local uh, law enforcement authorities, as well as what uh, General Baldwin mentioned, National Guard military police. These are augment force multipliers to be able to go in and provide security um, to uh, decrease any potential for any looting, to secure sites, um, to enforce road closures, uh, and to support any other evacuations that may be necessary. Uh, they'll continue on with that, that mission set until uh, the situation is mitigated or the local authorities think that they've got, they've got, they can, they can take it back over again. Uh, there are a number of school closures in uh, the seven counties that have been impacted by fire, not just in Sonoma, Napa, but in Butte and the other counties as well. Uh, roughly 14 school sites have been closed and the Department of Education is coordinating uh, school closures with local school districts throughout the, the area. Uh, we begun discu began discussions with uh, the local authorities uh, on establishing a local assistance center. This is a center where state, local, federal, uh, uh, insurance, non-governmental, public health groups come together. It's sort of like a one-stop shop for uh, disaster survivors to be able to come in and be able to get whatever services they need, particularly if they've lost everything like driver's license and other critical records, we will help them rebuild all of those at these local assistance centers. And uh, that'll be a supported effort be between local, state, and, and federal. And our hope is that we can get those centers, at least a few of them, up in the coming days, uh, if not early next week, to be able to address it. A lot of this will depend on, on, on uh, firefighting operations and the safety in the area to, to make that happen. Uh, we are also working with the Department of Insurance uh, to ensure that um, uh, everybody who has insurance and the insurance providers uh, step up and uh, uh, effectively and adequately support the people who have lost uh, homes. Uh, and we're working closely with the Attorney General's office to ensure that there's no gouging or any kind of criminal activity on the part of um, additional contractors coming in. Contractors Licensing Board will also be involved in that. Um, so far, we're really kind of focusing on unmet needs. Um, let me just take a moment to thank, really thank our private sector partners. They have been great in being able to lean forward. Raley's, Walmart, Facebook, uh, the California Grocers Association, just to name a few, have been exceptional partners in being able to support uh, all of the operations, and, and we, we, they're, a, they're a, a, a key partner for us as they move forward. So with that, um, I'd be happy to take any questions. Can you just talk a little bit about pause and how, walk us through how it's possible that 18 fires can kind of spark all at once, and is there any um, suspicion that uh, there could be something like arson involved with any of these fires? 
No, it's a very good question. So um, obviously we investigate the origin and cause of all fires. It's very important for us to know those causes so that we can work on prevention. Uh, and certainly if they're negligently started or criminally started in terms of arson, obviously we can hold the appropriate uh, individuals uh, accountable. Uh, all of these fires are under investigation and it's obviously very early in the process. Our focus has uh, certainly been in the beginning here as we are focusing on life safety and putting these fires out. Uh, so it's very early to, we don't really have any information, uh, but I can assure you those are all being actively investigated. I will tell you the chances that it's lightning uh, are, is probably fairly minimal. You know, these are all fires that were in areas where they were, you know, they're populated uh, and 95% uh, of our fires in the state um, are started by people of some n form. And so, but we're actively looking into all of them. Uh, when we have a wind event like this, that we, we are looking at opportunities where you have 50 mile an hour winds uh, bearing down on uh, Area. So every fire that starts um, has just a significant potential to grow into a large fire very, very quickly. At the peak of fire season, we were seeing almost 300 fires a week start in the state. But when you're under normal conditions, our firefighters can get in there, put them out very quickly, and 95% of those we do. But a fi fire starting after 10 o'clock at night under 50 plus mile an hour winds, under absolutely dry, dry fuel beds, um, every one of those fires had a, a, a a fighting chance to get going long before our firefighters are even able to get there. And so they all grew into to major fires very quickly. Yes, go ahead. So, you know, it's a very, uh, it's a good question and a, and a very real concern for all of us. Uh, look, these folks have lost everything. These, the, when you look at the destruction, uh, you know, it's, it's literally like it exploded. Uh, these people ran out of their homes uh, literally with minutes notice. And so literally barely the clothes on their back. And so they don't, pe people don't know what's left. And uh, there's always a desire to get back in and find out what's left. Did my home survive? Uh, they are extremely hazardous areas, and that's why we put in evacuation zones, and we, when people leave, we don't allow folks back in because uh, of those hazards, and, and they are very real hazards. When you burn an urban area like this, electrical lines, gas lines, uh, structures that are unstable, uh, hazardous materials, that's all there. Those are all the things that we're going to be working as the team, local, state, and federal, to work and clean up, and we want to very quickly as soon as we can render these areas safe, get people to repopulate. And that's one of our first priorities as soon as we stop the hazard and stop the fire. Uh, absolutely, we, take, uh, we have zero tolerance for people that are entering these properties illegally. Uh, when we hear of reports of looting, law enforcement works very closely uh, locally and at the state level uh, to, to take that very seriously. Looters will not be tolerated whatsoever. Um, and so obviously we don't want people not walking in these areas, not just because of the hazard, but because it, it's a crime to trespass on somebody's property uh, and, and, and obviously take things. Sorry. Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, you had mentioned uh, the general of the fire and how quickly people had to leave. Um, can you just address whether or not there, there was an opportunity to give uh, residents there more notice and, and how that fire yes, spread to the point where people did have to leave so quickly? So obviously, as we dissect all of these fires uh, over time, and we, we'll, we'll be looking all through all of that to determine uh, what notices occurred, what worked. All of these areas have these plans. That, you know, in the last five years, uh, Lake County, Napa County, all of these counties have experienced uh, way beyond their share of emergencies and fires. Uh, there are processes in place for early warning notifications through cell phones, through you know rever the reverse 911 or different systems that do that. But understand, these fires started after 10 o'clock, uh, around midnight, uh, on, a, on a Sunday night. People are sleeping, and uh, they burned so quickly, there was, there was no time to notify anybody. These, these fires came down into neighborhoods before anybody even realized the fires were occurring in many cases. And so uh, it was very difficult. People were in bed, and, and as we're dissecting uh, you know, what occurred with these fatalities over time, you know, we're going to find that some of these folks were literally just sleeping 
at home in bed and had no idea because there were only minutes, if not seconds. Uh, but those are all things, every time we have an emergency like this and a disaster, we go through all of this to determine, is there anything we can do differently? What can we learn from this? Uh, but a phenomenal effort was made and continues to be made by all of the law enforcement, firefighters, EMS professionals, and so many others uh, to get in harm's way to get people out of the way. Uh, we'll find out when this is done that just the stories folks will tell about uh, what they faced. Um, it's just a, it's just a, this is a tragic incident, uh, but an amazing amount of work was done to get people from out in front of these fires. Yes? So all of this information is being coordinated directly through the county sheriffs, the county coroners. Uh, no death notifications or names will be made public until all that information is uh, adjudicated locally, next to kin notified, all of those things. And so we uh, rely upon um, our counties and the, the local coroners to, to process that. Uh, as far as uh, the ongoing, we are constantly working to adjudicate uh, the, those that um, have been uh, reported missing. Uh, we continue to look, we work with employers, with families. Uh, there are missing persons hotlines that um, uh, are taking calls and then we follow up on every one of those leads uh, and then we're doing ground truthing to assure that uh, obviously if we can get into these areas once they're rendered uh, safe to determine, you know, are we finding anybody there? Since yes. So as, as she reported, we're now up to a total of 15 fatalities with two additional on the Tubbs fire for a total of nine uh, on that fire. And again, it just speaks to the dynamic situation uh, as we're getting into these areas and, 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 and looking um, and working with uh, local law enforcement. It's, it's, it's still very fluid. I, I think until you get out on the ground, I'm certainly from the pictures we've all seen, this is, uh, this is just pure devastation and it's gonna take us uh, a while uh, to get out and get through and comb through all of this. And that's also the, what we wanna ask everyone to be patient. Our first priority is to get people back into their homes when it's rendered safe. But it, this could be days, this could be weeks for some folks. And so we encourage everyone to be patient. All the information is going to be passed down, is being passed down through shelters and through social media. So p please pay close attention to all of those venues. Oh, no. Well, uh, just thank you very much, and we'll, we'll be happy to answer any individual uh, uh, interviews as, as necessary. Thanks for coming today, folks.